Hi, good morning, and um, thank you to ICAS for the, uh, the opportunity to come and um, speak to you this morning. So here we are, just short of three months, or 13 weeks, I think, to the day, or 91 days, or, you know, if you're really excited, 90 sleeps, I think, until uh, we actually get to get, go into the ballot box uh, and put our, put our cross on the paper. Um, and... What I want to do in, in a brief period of time this morning, and there is so much to say about the numbers and where public opinion is, but I want to leave you basically with four, in the short time available, four key points, which are one, that the, the gap uh, between uh, no and yes has closed, has it, has, how significantly it's closed, and whether you know, time is running out are, are other questions that we can we can revisit. Two, there are still a lot of undecided voters. There are fewer, or uncommitted voters, we say. There are fewer than there were the last time I spoke to you, and we'll see a bit more of that in a minute. Three, um, turnout is going to be really, really important and really crucial. Um, and I'll say a bit more about that. And four, a bit of new data that we haven't actually seen before. Oh, I've seen it. You won't have done. No one else would have done. Um, about... Um, whether this will be one kind of in the head or the heart. Um, and there's a bit of, bit of data about that, which feeds into what John Swinney was just saying at the end a minute ago. But first, I suppose I'll start with a disclaimer that anyone who read uh, the programme and thought this was going to be a prediction of the result, I'm sorry, it's going to be slightly disappointed. If I knew what the result was going to be, uh, I don't think I'd be standing here uh, now, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but... What we can do, and what we, what we do along with other um, survey pollsters, is to try and measure opinion at any particular point in time. We're not predicting a result, we're trying to see where opinion is at a point in time and how it's shifted um, over a course of a period. Now, point one, the gap has narrowed. Now that is, I think, by now, incontrovertible. There, that there is absolutely no doubt about it. There are, we are kind of, as you will know, sort of saturated with polls, some of which say the gap is closer. Um, where we are in our latest poll, which was a couple of weeks ago now, um, when we boil down into this sort of new method that everyone seems to be obsessed with of getting rid of undecided voters from your calculations. Um, we can say a bit more about the problems of that a bit later, but let's just go with the flow with that. We are looking at around, we think, about 60-40 as things stand. And that actually represents um, a closing of the gap, as you can see, in any trend. But again, it depends how far back you go. I mean, in recent months, the gap has closed. But actually, we're probably where we are about two, two and a half years ago. And a look at that graph shows that actually, opinion has been quite stable over that period, over that period of time. And, and just to sort of reiterate the challenge, I guess, for the yes side, I mean, we have never done a poll over sort of 35 years, 36 years now, that has shown a majority in favour of independence. Um, even in the sort of dark days of the introduction of the poll tax, um, the rise in, in support for independence around the time of the devolution referendum and the opening of this parliament, um, 15 or so years ago, where we got fairly close to 50%. So the, the challenge is, and I think has been pretty clear. So point one, the gap has narrowed. I think we were all pretty much aware of that. But it is, continues to be all about the undecided population or the uncommitted population. And we, when I spoke to you in um, November, um, I gave the, the sort of data that there are about half the population who are still um, to make their minds up. That's now um, the, who had made their mind up, and of course half who hadn't. We now think sort of approaching two-thirds of the population will have, have pretty much, the voting population now pretty much made their minds up. But of course that leaves 37% who haven't, which is actually a pretty big number for both campaigns to aim at. Now, that includes people who tell us at the moment that they may not vote. So half of that 37% is people who at the moment tell us they may not vote. Now, 
Part of this for the campaigns is actually going to be about persuading people to vote as much as persuading them to vote in any particular way. And we'll say a bit more about turnout um, in a minute. But there are sub still, still substantial numbers of voters who tell us they will vote, but either haven't decided, so when you ask the question, they just answer they don't know, <clears throat> or who are leaning, what we would call waverers. So they give us either a yes or no answer, but when we push them a bit, you know, is there a chance you might change your mind between now and the referendum? They tell us yes. So there are still about one in five of the population who fall into that camp. And, the, and when you think about the numbers and you think about how the gap is closing, the uncommitted, undecided population here is still extremely uh, important. And that's just going through comparing the numbers that I gave in November um, to now. So the trend is, as I say, that there are now fewer what we would call uncommitted voters. And that's just another way of, of, of showing it. Uh, we, we have in the past seen that um, the no vote has been, what we sort of say, a bit firmer. So there are fewer waverers uh, amongst no voters than there are amongst yes voters. That's not really the case anymore. There is no sort of discernible difference or statistical difference uh, in terms of waverers between yes and no voters. But it's important to sort of point out that the undecided population out there are not a sort of homogenous group who are going to vote en masse probably one way or another. And in fact, in the latest poll, we had slightly more no-leaning um, undecided, but actually it changes between polls. The poll we did previously, there was slightly more yes-leaning uh, yes undecided, but there are still a lot of what we would call clinical undecided, i.e. people who even when you push them, just I, I'm actually just not leaning one way or another. I just really, really, really cannot make my mind up um, about this. So, point two, there are still a lot of undecided voters out there. Point three, turnout will be crucial and, I should say, pretty difficult for the likes of us to try and estimate, which is not a, a sort of plea to feel sorry for those of us who are trying to work in, in trying to see what the outcome is going to be. But it is actually really, what's clear is that this is um, for voters out there, for, for people with the franchise, this is not a typical election. Turnout will be, I think we can safely predict, significantly higher <coughs> than in a, you know, a, either a general election or a Holyrood election. People do, when we talk to people, they do realise the significance of the event um, in September in a way that they don't with an election. And there will be um, significant numbers of people who would not vote in election and probably have not voted before who will vote in September. In our last poll, we had just over 80% of people who told us they were 10 out of 10 certain to vote. Now, <clears throat> to be honest, I'd be quite surprised if turnout was in the 80s. Um, some people do tell us they're going to vote and they, they have no intention of or they just they won't on the day. But it will be, even if we take a, a, a bit of a drop off that 80% figure, it's, it's, even if it's in, the, say, the mid-70s, um, that is really high by modern, by modern standards. Interestingly, um, 16 to 24-year-olds, turnout there will probably be quite high. You'll have read a lot, I'm sure, about the registration of 16 to 17-year-olds and how successful that's been. Of course, that doesn't mean that they'll all turn out and vote. But I think it does mean that the that sort of length of the debate and so on has meant that this has kind of captured the imaginations of young people <clears throat> as well as older, more established voters. Age is still the strongest predictor of um, turnout, um, but the gap between older and younger voters probably won't be as significant as it is in elections. <clears throat> now, forgive all the numbers on this chart. But what we're trying to do uh, at the moment is get a little bit more sophisticated about how differential turnout might affect the results. So in our last poll, 
um, as well as asking people how likely you are to turn out to vote, we ask them, did you vote, or do you usually vote in general elections, do you usually vote in Holyrood elections, how interested are you in the referendum and how interested are you in politics in general? And when we strip down and start filtering down, in, drilling into those numbers, we see that the, the result gets somewhat closer when we only include those who are interested in the referendum and interested in politics in general. Now, <clears throat> at the moment, we don't really want to say too much about whether a high turnout helps one side or another. But what this does sort of suggest is that the yes, the, the yes side won't have too much difficulty getting their vote out. That, that they tend to be probably more motivated, uh, more interested uh, in politics in general, more inter and certainly more interested in the referendum. And we will be saying more about, about that in the, the weeks ahead. So point three, turnout will be crucial, difficult to estimate. But time is clearly running out. Although there are large numbers of undecided voters, the time to actually persuade them one way or the other is, is running out. And the campaigns will become, uh, of course, increasingly important both on the ground, in the media, and so on. And what is clear is that um, despite the fact that the yes still have uh, a lead in, in all polls, and including in our poll, um, uh, that no still have the lead, yes are seen by voters as running the more effective campaign. Now, th that may ask the question, why aren't they doing better in some of the polls? But it does suggest that as the campaigns become more important, perhaps they have more of a chance of winning over some of the undecided. And it's Actually, even among no voters, around a third of people who are voting no tell us um, they think that yes is having a better campaign. So they're intending to vote no despite the campaign, which, despite the no campaign rather than because of it. And the same is true of undecided voters. But my final point, which I think, and, and this is some of the new data. Um, that we'll be saying a bit more about over the coming days, is, is this going to be won um, by appealing to emotion and uh, the heart, or is it going to be won by appealing uh, more sort of rationally and so on? And what we did in our last poll is we asked people, you know, is this a matter of a head or a heart? Does your heart say both? Yeah, your, your head and your heart say both yes and both no, or both no, or is there a split? And the really key figure on the on the pie on the, the donut chart there is the 23% who tell us that their heart says yes and their head, but their head says no. And 60%, 60% of undecided voters, their heart says yes and their head says no. They they want to vote yes. The emotion is there. They don't need they don't need the emotion anymore. The way they're going to be won over is through, as John Swinney was saying earlier, the, the hard-nosed economic argument. That's what they need. If they're going to vote yes, that's, that's how they need to be. You know, This is not about playing Braveheart on the TV every night in the week leading up to September the 18th for them. This is if they get the emotion. They understand that. They want it, they're, in their heart, they want to vote yes, but they're still they're still undecided. And the way to get them over the line, if you're in the yes camp, is through a kind of rational economic argument. So that's my, my fourth point. Uh, the end. There's, there's lots more to say on this. Happy to answer questions. Um, but that's it for now. Thanks. Thank you very much indeed, Mark.